Good evening, Instagram. It's your favorite entertainer coming to you with a history lesson. And this is take 113, probably. But we need entertainment because our prime minister just told us that the lockdown will remain until at least the 13th of April. So I'm gonna be here for a long time. And today I will talk about my hometown, Sarpsborg, or Shashpur, if you're from there, uh, which is in the southeast of Norway, near the Swedish border, around 100 kilometers from Oslo. Um, and it's the third oldest town in Norway. It was founded in 2016, but even before that, uh, the area was quite highly populated compared to other places in Norway uh, and had been ever since the, since the Stone Ages. Um, you can go around uh, in the area, the county of Östfold, and you will find a lot of traces in the landscape after uh, the people who settled there um, 10,000 years ago. Yes, but back to the Middle Ages and 2016, when King Olav Haraldsson uh, decided to uh, found a town because he had troubles with the Swedes and haven't we always had troubles with the Swedes? But he needed to keep the population there happy and connected to him instead of the Swedish king, who was called Olof. Uh, <laughs> and um, he found a very well, a very good situated place to build his town, because through the landscape, uh, the longest river in Norway, Gromma, runs, and there's a big waterfall, and on top of the waterfall, waterfall there's a uh, sort of a peninsula going out into the river and that was where he built his town uh, it was unattackable uh, from the east because then you had to come over the river and the river has very strong currents because uh, the waterfall is one of the strongest and uh, has the most water in the north of Europe. So it was a very good place to build uh, a town. And it was sort of a fortress. He built like uh, walls of timber and dirt, like big, um, yeah, uh, around the town. Uh, and then of course he had a natural um, fences from the river um, and then um, it was just wooden buildings we're not doing things in stone in Norway we use wood because we have so much of it um, and after a while the town grew and uh, it was also a lot of settlements outside that wall that he had built around and <laughs> I am coming to a point here because I'm going to tell you something that happened in 1702 but we need to go through the Middle Ages to come there so just stick with me yes um, and um, the kings resided uh, in Sarpsborg on and off uh, until the 1100s I think and then it sort of was uh, given to some nobleman and it was it went out of the king's uh, ownership <laughs> can you say that oh well um uh, but um, it kept on growing and it was a place where people people passed by so there was a lot of trade and then you had a waterfall and then when the sawmills came um, so um, by 1567 it had grown quite a lot uh, and the, the 
the people who lived there was quite unhappy because they didn't have enough um, agricultural land to grow um, well crops to feed the town and they needed that uh, and none of the farmers around the town was willing to give up any land for them but then the Swedes came as they usually do and they resolved this question by burning down the town <laughs> In 1567, it was the Great Nordic Seven Year War and the Swede was on the rampage. Uh, they had been to Oslo and tried to uh, enter Akershus Festning, but they didn't succeed. So they took Sarpsborg instead. Um, and they first they tried to get money to not burn down the town. Um, um, but they weren't willing to give them money, so they burnt it. They also had a big battle uh, around where my grandmother lived uh, and uh, there was this bog there when I grew up and she said, oh, that's called a dead man's bog because all the dead Swedes are under there. Yeah, so anywho, uh, the town uh, was burnt, but only the, the town outside the walls. The town within the walls, which was now just really a big farm or a mansion in wood, if you can imagine. Uh, uh, so that was still there, the, the thing, the, the, the town that King Olaf had built. This is gonna be long, I'm already at six minutes, I'm sorry. Uh, and then um, uh, the very unhappy people in Sarpsburg uh, complained to the king and said we want to move this town because we don't have enough land to grow crops so we can survive and the king said okay it was a Danish king at that time uh, he said okay you can move you can move a little closer to the sea so they went sort of 10 kilometers down the river and then they built a town there and that town is now called Fredrikstad and it's sort of the worst enemy of Salzburg, but they are originally from Salzburg. Yes, they are. Uh, but then it was no longer a town. Uh, all the trade disappeared, uh, but uh, it was still a sawmill because of that, um, that waterfall and uh, because of the river, because all there was so much forest above the waterfall all the way up till where the river ends and all that timber was shipped with the the um, river down the river to come to the port near the new town uh, so uh, in Sarpsborg they had a sawmill and they were they flourished But then comes the winter of 1702. It was a very mild winter, no frost and a lot of rain. And it sort of dug in to the ground underneath the town and it sort of chipped away on it. And uh, on the night of the 14th of February, the lady of the manor uh, the wife of Jens Badenschall uh, was going into labor and uh, they had to call the midwife and when the midwife came she saw huge cracks in the ground um, and they alerted the house and uh, they had to flee in their nightgowns and slippers uh, and they just got over the big crack when the whole thing slid down the waterfall and into the river uh, and it was it was huge it was 340 meters wide this big landslide slide that just whoosh, it wiped everything away. There's not a trace left 
of King Olaf's town, uh, except for some of the walls that he built around the town. Um, and with it uh, was 15 people and about 200 cattle and sheep and pigs uh, that all went into the river that night. Uh, and left was the uh, the man, the the man of the house, Jens Vardenshol, and his wife who was in labor, and there are two children and some servants, and they got over the river a little higher and went to uh, the brother of Jens Vardenshol, Erik Vardenshol, who lived at Hafflunodgor, which is a very nice posh place that still exists. Um, and uh, the poor woman had her baby, but because of all that had happened, the baby died the next day. Uh, and uh, that is why there are no traces of my hometown from that time because first the Swedes burnt everything to the ground outside the wall and then everything slid into the river so yeah <laughs> that's the story of my hometown and here you can see everything that they managed to save from Borregård which was the name of the farm inside the walls uh, it was this chest with silver and documents and that is the story of my hometown, at least up to 702. And if you have followed me all this way, I salute you. Have a lovely evening.